Hi everybody, my name is C.R. Grimmer. I use she, her, they, them pronouns, and I am also the project director and the creator of the Poetry Vlog, which is the channel hosting this fundraiser video. What follows is a low production, short clip reading of poets coming together for an hour to read in support of Black trans lives. This fundraiser reading is called Poets for Black Trans Lives, and it's also a hashtag that you can use if you share this fundraising opportunity widely on your network. Our ask is that you donate using the link in the description of this video. If you're listening to the podcast version, the link will be in the description of the podcast episode. And if you can't afford to donate, that you share widely with your network. The poets in this video came together and submitted video recordings to hope that you will provide funds and contribute to helping Black trans lives flourish, thrive, and be part of the Black Lives Matter movement. This is both an effort to amplify voices that are oftentimes put to the fringes of both queer, LGBTQA+, anti-colonial, and anti-racist movements, and it's also to drum up financial support. If you have the means, it would be wonderful if you could donate. In the description of this episode, you will see a link to the Black Trans Network. That is a wonderful coalition resource and you can donate directly to them. The Poetry Vlog is committed, as am I, to not making any money personally off of this episode. So please be assured that if this reaches enough views that there could be money made on it, all proceeds from it, 100%, will go directly towards the exact same fundraising initiative. This video will be left up and even though it is meant to be staged as a low production live style reading, we hope that if you don't have the means to contribute a dollar or more, that you will share this widely with your networks. You never know if there's somebody close to you that would be able and willing to contribute and just didn't have a spot where they knew they could donate funds. Either way, I hope you'll be in coalition with us. The saying for this project and this entire channel is that hope is not just a feeling, but a call to action. And poetry, as always, is already here to meet it. I hope that you'll join us and be in coalition with myself and the amazing poets that joined in this conversation today. And in that coalition building, take action with us to support Black trans lives. Hi, um, my name is Cameron Awkwardrich. I use he, him pronouns. Um, and I'm gonna read a poem that I wrote sort of soon after the Pulse shooting. Um, and it's a poem that it was written in response to sort of my dismay about the shooting, obviously, but also and especially the way that um, those brown and black queer and trans folks' lives became mournable in the kind of national dominant imaginary only after they had sort of been subjected to violence, right? It was another sort of especially brutal reminder of the way that um, cutie pock lives tend to be most valuable to dominant cultures only after death. Um, and I wrote this poem in an attempt to kind of think about or or resist that, um, yeah, that framing. Um, and that is why I am participating in this fundraiser. Um, I think that it is vital, right, to support Black trans life, um, not only in moments of crisis and not only as crisis response, but instead as um, ways of funneling resources toward the sort of necessary dreaming and liberation work that happens in Black trans spaces and Black trans lives and Black trans imaginations. Um, yeah, so this poem is called All My Friends Are Sad and Bright. I think door and there is. Open and here's a room where everything you've lost is washed ashore. We've seen the news, we know the story how even our bodies hurt us sometimes so much. Room of broken mirrors, room of salt, room of marigolds and it's your party, baby. Here's a crown, here's a gown, and no man just around the corner, all your eyes on you. I think gunflower, and here's a field. Here's a room where every bullet planted blooms, boy with flower, boy with metal rose. What's done is done, what fire affords you. I was a child once. Anything could be my kingdom. All I had to do was say, 
Here's a room of water and gold and nothing else. A room in which a man takes back his blood. Goodbye, blood. Goodbye, stars. Goodbye, dead light troubling the dance my body does all by itself. I was by myself once, beside myself. Breath fogging up a window and what's on the other side. Only everything you wanted. And here's a room of everything you wanted. Think peppermint and myrrh. Think loved and you don't even have to die. Thanks for listening. Um, please, if you're able, um, yeah, follow the link below this video to donate to um, the Black Trans Network's fundraiser for Black and Brown trans life. Hi, my name is Chen Chen. My pronouns are he, him, his. I'm so honored to be participating in this fundraiser in support of the Black Trans Network. Today I'm reading just one poem. It's called Spell Defined Family. Spell Defined Family. I thirst for the starlight that opens elephant skin. I thirst for the raven conjugated into ribbon by summer storm. My job is to trick adults into knowing they have hearts. My heart whose irregular plural form is Hermes. My Hermes whose mouths are wings and thieves, begging the moon for a flood of wolves, the reddest honey. My job is to trick myself into believing there are new ways to find impossible honey. For I do not know all the faces of my family on this earth. Perhaps it will take a lifetime or five to discover every sister, brother, heartbeat, elephantine, serpentine, opposite of Saturnine. I drive in the downpour, the road conjugated into uproar by hearts I do not know, by the guttural and gargantuan highway lion, the 18-wheeler whose shawl of mist is a main of newborn grandmothers. So I highly encourage everyone listening to this to please donate to the Black Trans Network at the link below. Thank you. My name is Joshua Burden, pronouns he, him. And I stand in solidarity with Black Trans Lives. And it's an honor to be a part of this reading in support of Black Trans Lives. I'm gonna be reading one poem from a manuscript I've been working on for about three years now. And the manuscript is called Grace Engine. And this is the first poem from the collection. And this manuscript started off being about generational trauma and familial trauma. The hearing we inherit. I cannot manage language, but my body still has more options than to listen. Two men crying in a green truck, the house of the slowly given up. Prayer and periphery both share the same rhythm. I once knew a red-haired white woman suffering from the disease of killing herself. At the white woman's wake, a poet with my name read Hoagland's poem, Suicide Song, and it made me sick. In my father's cruelty, he named me Yeshua, a name that carries with it the brutality of a brick bat. And yes, Joshua, you lost your mind again yesterday. Like how the housewife left her key in the door. And yes, it is all yours, the steer and smear of letting someone in. I've been having a different relationship with ghosts. They came to me and quiet all night, saying nothing, but expecting something of me. They rarely came to us as children, back when I was at the age when my aunt would call us nigglets. 
back when an older cousin would tease another cousin, calling her name synonymous with darkness, like Midnight, Hershey, and Shadow. The ghost watched us with tenderness, asked to not wake us. On one occasion, I mimicked him, calling the younger cousin black an insult. The look of betrayal on her face. And this was when I learned metaphor. How I must have saw her hue as see-through. Years later, I heard the older cousin try to set a white woman on fire. My cousins, I still love them like I love the night. How we are there and not there. If I could name myself, it would be Wisteria, the sky's fisher. We heard stories of our grandmother in her cabin house, shooting away a black bear. Now the ghosts come to me in threes. They say the price of admission is assistance and two forms of forgiveness, in black and gray. I say, I love you all, and love you, and love you, and love you. But my hands still shake in June. So there's a link below where you can donate to the Black Trans Network. So it's important to donate and share. If you can't donate, just please share the link. Thank you. I'm Jeffrey Davis. Uh, my pronouns are he, him. I'll be reading some poetry from my book, Night Angler. Um, and I'm here for a new collective attunement. Um, I don't want my child or anyone's child to accept an imagination that asks or allows anyone's light, especially that of black trans women, to be cleaved from this world. What I mean when I say harmony. Dear boy, ain't nothing not about bodies. We have more than one sun, more than one way to gasp inside the heat and arms of praise. Worship the warmth of each loaded light. Let your body grow fragile and offertory, sweet. Lick, bite, know the knot of your desire. Hold it in your mouth. Let it live. Let it split. Do not leave this earth without tasting what passes between fingers. Sun, always go deep. Find the seed in each fruit's buried longing. If it is yours, sing it mine. West Virginia Nocturne. One grief all evening. I stumbled upon another animal merely being itself and still cuffing me to grace. This time a bumblebee, black and staggered above some wet sidewalk litter. When I stop at what I think is dying to deny loneliness one more triumph, I see instead a thing drunk with discovery, the bee entangled with blossom after pale raindropped blossom gathered beneath a dogwood. And suddenly I receive the cold curves and severe angles from this morning's difficult dreams about faith, certain as light arriving, certain as light dimming to another shadowed weight. How many strokes of undivided wonder will have me cross the next border, my hands emptied of questions? Thank you for being here. Uh, please remember to donate to the nonprofit at the link below. Bless you. Hi, 
Hi, my name is Laura Day. I am a Shawnee poet and I'm reading with you tonight from Renton, Washington. Appreciate this opportunity to be in community and to read with all of you. Um, I'm going to read two small poems. Um, the first poem I'd like to read is called Leviathan. Leviathan. In Westport, the small French cart of the voyageurs earned the name Mule Killer. Once Shawnee was the lingua franca up and down the Mississippi. Then molassi became molasses. For the bringing of the horse, it is said much can be forgiven. Burn of Missouri whiskey and achy molars, lunatic fevers of cholera. Even those men born astride, rare beasts to share that weight on such fine and slender legs. The next poem is called Timber Scribe. Between the membrane of fur and muscle, blades fevered by appetite, dimpled the prairie with denuded bison. The pick's sharp interruption of the ground's moss and prairie grass union, uncoupled Kansas soil. A timber scribe, small enough to hide in the curve of the palm, portable instrument, the great reconnaissance, subtle gouge for the lonely mind. I chose these two shorter poems um, because I was looking through a lot of what I've written and these poems were informed by um, a time of pandemic and um, American violence. So they seem to resonate for me and I hope that um, they will be of interest for all of you too. And thank you. Good night. Hi, I'm Sarah, and I'm reading a poem titled Clip. It's a short sequence, the first one that appears in my book entering Sappho, which will be published by Coach House Books this fall. Clip. Monday, May 15th, Sappho, Washington. A logging chapter is closed. Those country maidens were good riders, flowers blooming in an old bathtub, cows grazing in an orchard, garments wet as they should be. Across the dirt road, peasant girls on the front porch, a town of five houses, Oh, anyone would want to live in the fenced area nearby. Anyone, wet dress around her feet. Her dress about her ankles, an old bathtub. In the front yard, horses munch grass. What wench country fried at the side of the highway has electricity, television, a telephone. Oh, it's for the birds. What rustic girl plans to enter her prize quarter horse in races this summer? She's never known anything but logging trucks. She doesn't even draw her gown across her feet. Water flowers bloom, country girls turn north at Sappho, go to Pisht, spend time darning holes in wool socks and wondering why would anyone pull rags over her ankles. What girl wants to live in nearness to fishing? What country girl is unspoiled nature? Young mothers by choice, they hear about it three days later. They still don't pull the cloth over their feet. Down Highway 101 a piece, what country girl says, you can do these things in cities, small town life is all I want to know. They front on the old houses for truckers and tourists, tearing down the last of the company shacks. What girl waits like a wife for wet attackers, spinning yarns from her country dress? Oh, this girl gathers it up with artless grace. You can still see a girl's feet at Sappho. You can see the owner of the company store. Those girls would sit eating clams in a simple dress, soft blossoms in a line on the ground. Maybe loggers and their families shot deer, bear, elk, and some girl in the area. 
Why would anyone want to live when May 1 the post office closes forever? Those girls lay claim to time, backward and forward, their hemlines sweeping the ground. Thank you. I'm Emily Joy Oman and I'm a video editing and social media intern here at the Poetry Vlog. My work has been in venues such as the Athens International Video Poetry Festival, Entropy, Vice, BuzzFeed, etc. So I'm reading here today because I want to support Black Trans Lives and the movement that has been catalyzed by George Floyd. And I don't want to see the spark of the movement diminish like it does in many movements that start out with a lot of energy and then over time kind of decline. I don't want to see that happen. So that's why I'm reading here today. And I will be reading to you my new poem, Fresh Off the Press of Rogue Agent, which is Sundress Publications Literary Journal. And it's called Ode to the Girl Not on a, a Diet. So I'll begin. Ode to the Girl Not on a Diet. Ride on calorie cowgirl. When your frenemy told you to eat less sugar, you painted your lips red in response. Just like the time that woman at Whole Foods side-eyed you because your cart was full of bread and not leafy greens. Your bloated belly in a tight-fitting cocktail dress is full of no fucks. Sometimes you even think it deserves an Instagram account of its own. You have learned valuable lessons in your non-diet life like the strength it takes to break through a sugar crash, how much caffeine your body can actually handle, and that ice cream makes everything 90% better. On a dinner date, when the waitress asks you, what would you like to order? You pull the steak knife from your purse and stab it with a matter of fact force on the menu item of pasta instead of salad. And when the man you're with comments, I like a girl who eats, you slide him the check, take your pasta, and leave. Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Jackson Neal. I am a poet from Houston, Texas. I use he, him, and they, them pronouns. Um, if you're visually impaired, I have white skin, short brown hair, a light brown beard, blue eyes. Um, I'm wearing a white shirt, a cream colored cardigan. I have two gold earrings in. Uh, I'm in a light gray room with a bookcase behind me and there's a black door to my right. So the reason, I'm the reason that I am participating in this fundraiser is because black trans women are the most important members of this future that we're approaching, this abolitionist future, one without white supremacy. As Sada Shakur said that it's our, it is our duty to fight for our freedom. And black trans women are our freedom. So this fundraiser is part of our revolutionary duty to love one another. Um, as a white gay man, I come from a history and a people who have and who do enact some of the worst violence unto these women. So to not reckon with that or to perform a reckoning for the eyes of an audience and not offer my time, my energy, and my money would be to enact further violence unto these women for whom I owe all of my rights. So I'm gonna be donating, I'm gonna be donating and I'll also be reading for you all in the hopes that you donate as well. The poem that I brought in is titled Monstrance. Uh, for a little bit of context, a monstrance is an ornament that is used in the Catholic ceremony of adoration to um, adore or witness the, uh, the host or the Eucharist. And it comes from the Latin word to, to show or to demonstrate. Monstrance. Every time I open Instagram, another white faggot is practicing a reverence. Death does its dirty work, and a man, 
that might be me posing naked on the casket cackles the way I do recklessly through the requiem like godless pigs like glut chameleons. I strut the algorithm's rug in neon pleather and tacky jock straps, plastic skin clutching skin, beg my flimsy spine to bend another inch toward breakable, toward wanted, while someone mourns the metal in their mother. What shameless creature am I? Lathering myself in sun lotion, glossing my teeth, Bright thighs as shiny as the boots of police. One hundred men wearing on my face shoot photos on a place called Fire Island while the streets ring with real shots. Real fire. Like the hydra brewing in its slime, I slop my entangled limbs across the oculus like serpents, like sirens, like milk-white goats sprouting triple tongues. I believe in monsters. And they all look like me. From the Latin monere, to show, to warn, the bruteness of biology. Anatomy so sloppy it omens evil, cystic and skeletal, mucus and scapular, the body's awful prophecy. The function of a monster is simply to be seen. Look at me, look at me, says the white fag on the beach. Most white people are pretty bad, but not me though, right? We ask while fixing brunch from someone's bones. I'm not a monster, I say through my expensive fangs. I'm just iconic. Maybe my body is white Yahweh's wafer-thin effigy. My goose flesh ass, his only relic. Look at me, look at me, my digitized nimbus, my one and zero halo. Who dare breathes when I am sexless despite the promise whiteness whispered me. In the glassy eye of my lizard god, I audition my guiltless legs, my vulgar alabaster. I want so badly to be an icon and never ask of who. The horny musk of satyr and centaur staining J.J. Malibu, if I am a warning. Like every monster is. Maybe I predicate my own unbecoming. Maybe this is my pinkish prophecy. When the blonde and blue-eyed dragon loses its last head. And I, in my fear of the unknown, Burrow deep into my digit fiction. I build an algorithmic life with beach boys made of code. My apoptotic lovers recalculate at noon. And when I'm buried deep in binary, I look back like Eurydice licking a sky blue pixel. And not privilege, not pigment, not even the smartphone's iconic entrance will offer a way out. Thank you all for listening. Uh, please refer to the links below and make a donation to the Black Trans Fund. Thank you. My name is Kiana Towns, she, her, and today I'm going to read a poem that I wrote while I was in graduate school a long time ago. The poem is called Behest of a Fading Diva. It is written in honor of and uh, in celebration of and in the voice of my Uncle Vincent, um, who was a gay man. He passed away in 2001. My uncle uh, was the first gay person that I ever remember knowing. But more importantly, he was a person who introduced me uh, to the LGBT community. And my uncle uh, afforded me the opportunity to get to know people and to understand uh, people and to really um, come to love and respect and support the rights 
of everybody to just live, to, to have the opportunity to live. And so uh, when I check the news on the daily and I see that another black trans woman has been murdered, it really does break my heart. It really does make me angry. It makes me want to speak out and it makes me want to find other ways to support because if nothing else at all, every single one of us has the right, the absolute right to live. And so I am here today in support of every black trans woman I have ever known, the ones who have become my family and the people that I do not know at all because we all deserve to live. Behest of a fading diva for Uncle Vincent. Don't let nobody fuck with the guppies or the lavender girls at drama club. Lonnie and Tika need dresses for ball and somebody go with November to get her test results when they come back. Clear up all the rumors behind me. Let them bitches know I ain't going crazy. I ain't on Jenny Crank. I ain't killed no weenie dog. Wrap the Bible in silk with a hot glue gun or swallow globs of Vaseline. I was shining my face protecting my skin from the wind. And this wheelchair is just cause I'm tired, you know. I've been stomping the catwalk with, walk with these feet for longer than these kids been alive. A bitch needs rest and relaxation at the end of the day. And don't let them hurt over me, lingering and snotting like schoolgirls recollecting old love. It's like my big sister Carolyn used to say, pain is real but it don't mean we need to feel it everywhere we breathe. And tell them bitches I ain't dead. I'm just looking for another place to live. And now, here's your opportunity to help, to support uh, by giving. Check the link below. There is an opportunity to give, no matter the amount. And most importantly, I hope that we all continue the fight to stand in the gap and to stand in support of black trans women who absolutely deserve to live. Thank you to everyone for the work that you've already done. Thank you for the work that you will do. I honor you in this moment and God bless. My name is Jane Wong and Black Trans Lives Matter, period. The fact that you have to explain why is deeply, deeply fucked up. Black trans activists have been at the forefront of the Stonewall Inn uprising and the Black Lives Matter movement and have been continually erased. If you're fighting for Black liberation and joy, you must fight for Black trans liberation and joy. This poem that I'm going to be reading is a new one um, written during the quarantine. It's called Carry What You Know to Loosen the Weight of What You Don't. This morning I heaved the clatter of pots and pans, each with a steaming lid for some other vessel of seasoned healing. Was it morning, all dew and daffodils loosening, ants singing along a melted lollipop? Yes, the tide, the purple starfish waving hello. No, the shades shuddered in, the windows closed like a fist in fitful sleep. Empty parking lots, otherworldly luminosity, Coda. This morning I heaved the splintered hum of crickets in a whirring field, lugged each syrupy song. Was it a song? What my grandparents sang in the hollow of hunger. Yes, ginger scented memory, fear of what we cannot touch. No, wrinkles along the brow, a calligraphy too close to Coda. This morning I heaved one leg and then the other. Still here, still walking, past rows of bolted garlic. Tender sky, a reminder, Coda carried over. Eyes a mother vessel, healing, loosening, the tide waving luminosity, co heaved hum. Each song sang what we cannot. Still here, still a reminder. This morning was it memory, touch, too close to past. Tender reminder carried Coda over. This morning, each syrupy song. A calligraphy too close to healing, loosening tender sky a reminder. The tide this morning was it memory, touch, 
too close to healing. All dew and daffodils, otherworldly. My grandparents heaved one leg and then the other. Garlic, healing, loosening, co-heaved touch. Tender, reminded, carry, coda, over, coda.